check up on the Facebook Marketplace, see if I can find any used tractors, maybe a corn planter, who knows, let's just go look. Too expensive, that's too expensive. Uh, that's got a lot of issues. Oh, here we go. There's a Case Traction King. 2870 with no hours. With a 2150 early riser corn planter, 16 row with 30 inches. It has on row poppers. The planter sat for five years. Never been used in the field. Was bought brand new. And then the case was bought brand new by the guy's great grandpa when Case first introduced the Traction King. The plan the guy was planning to use it for was to start a corn and soybean farm with the Traction King and the early rise, riser planter. But life's changed and, he, and it couldn't happen so he's asking for 100000 for the whole setup or 50,000 for each. Hmm. I'm gonna give this guy a call and see. Yeah. Yeah, say, I saw you had an ad on Facebook Marketplace for a Case Traction King and a 2150 Early Riser Corn Planter. Yeah, I was wondering if you had, if you still had it and if it would been all right if I can come down and take a look at it. It's going to be a long drive, but I am looking for a higher horsepower tractor and bigger corn planter. You have nothing going on today? Okay, that worked for me. Yeah. Uh, I'll get on the road here soon and I'll stop over there and take a look at it. Yeah, all right. Sounds good. Yep. Bye. Ah. Uh, Cost a lot of money to keep this place running, but we need a bigger tractor. Massey is not the Massey is big enough, but I don't want to use the Massey for everything. I don't want the Massey used for me until it's. Uh, I suppose. Well, let's go take a look at a. Action King, get on the road and go take a look at it. Nothing really major going on. We got the sorghum off. We're gonna go take a look at it. You guys really need to stop sneaking up on me like that. Welcome, my name is HT Farms. If you're new to the channel, this is Spring Spring Creek, North Dakota, and this would be episode three. In episode two, we ended off taking care of our um, sorghum we had in the field. Well, like in the, towards the end of the episode, like I said, I was probably gonna finish that off screen, and I did end up finishing that sorghum field off screen, which gave us a little over 300,000 liters of sorghum. And then I decided to get the field limed and plowed because we have to get canola in the ground before end of September and we are already into the second day in September and I want to get canola planted in there as soon as I can. So I took, took the opportunity to go spread lime in the fields that we had plowed and then a couple more fields got spread in lime that we will plow throughout the day after we get the canola planted. I'm thinking all the plowing will be done after off screen, not during the episode because that will get boring of just me going back and forth with the plow if you're also new. I don't use hard hands, I don't use any kind of GPS, anything like that. I do all the work myself on my own. That's my type of playthrough. So we did all the sorghum harvest myself, I did the lime spreading myself, and then I did the plowing of that field myself. 
and we're just gonna keep that's how I'm gonna go that's what I enjoy and so like I just in the beginning of the episode there's a tracking king case tractor with a early riser corn planter and for the size of fields we are farming I would like a bigger tractor just to use on the planters instead of having the massy be ran on the chisel plow heavy tillage then all of a sudden I'd be running the planters through the ground and it's just nice to have a bigger tractor on hand so we're gonna go we're gonna go take a look at that and I will see you guys when we get there and we'll take a look at the tractor so yeah I believe we're getting close to this guy's place where he says we live. I think this is the farm right up here. Or we just pulled into some complete strangers. Farmyard. I'm gonna go up to the house, I'm gonna see if he's there, and if this is the actual right place, I will just meet you guys down by the tractor. Alright, we are in the right place. He says it's just right down here, the shed here. He says it's all, it's all hooked up, we don't have to do any hooking up. And we're gonna just... Make sure the blinker is not on. We're gonna shut the pickup off here. And oh, he says the door sticks. It's just easier to open the big door. All right, we got some nice tracks. That'll make it nice. Ridge markers, oil cooler system on it. Okay. Tractor seems to be pretty clean. It's got big tires on it. Um, Eight seventy. Well, let's climb in and see how the cab looks. Cab seems to be very clean. Um, he did say we can pull it out and test everything, make sure everything runs. So we're gonna check engine oil. Yep, that looks good. Then we're gonna go check hydraulic oil in the back here. All right, that looks good. Well, let's see if it starts. He's sat for years. Ah, there we go. Alright, let's try to back this out without hitting anything. Just keep backing it up. See if it unfolds. Oh, that's a good sign. Seems like the tractor's going a little sideways. Alright. Let's turn it on. Let's go out.
out what lever does what. Red markers. Bridge markers. I wonder why that happened. I wonder if we shut it off. Everything seems to be bouncing like it should. But we have no bridge markers. See if that helps. It didn't. Turn it back on. We're not getting any ridge markers. So I will cut back in once I figure out why we're not getting that to work. All right, we figured that issue out. Ridge markers seem to be working. Hear the air movement flowing. We're gonna shut it off. We're gonna put the ridge marker back in and we're gonna just drive and double check, make sure those are bouncing up and down like they're supposed to. They do seem like they are. So we're gonna lift it up. We're gonna fold it back up. And I think that we're gonna make a purchase of it. And I have no idea why that's doing that. This would be a great purchase for us to do our corn and soybeans and sunflowers in the next spring. The only thing is we are going to have to figure out something, figure out some way to get this whole unit transported back out to the farm. But I think what I'm going to go do right away is I'm going to go make that deal with the guy here, have it already paid and bought and then and then we'll figure out what we need to do to how to bring this guy back home. So we're just gonna back it in. I'm gonna go run up to the guy's house and make a few phone calls while I'm here to see if I can find someone who's got a semi and a flat deck trailer that can pull both of them back to the farm for us or I can borrow it and pull it back and return it so I will see you guys in a few minutes when I figure that out all right well after a few phone calls I was able to get a hold of one of my buddies and he's letting me borrow his Landall trailer and I can't remember what his semi is but he's allowing us to borrow it and use it I think it's right Royal diamond red Royal I think is what its name is diamond red even though there's no ounce of red on it but he is allowing us to borrow it to get the tractor and planter back home so we can get the tractor there because I think we're gonna use the tractor on the air seeder and get onto the field right away and start getting canola in the ground. Um, I think we're going to load the planter up first, take that back to the farm, then unload the planter, and then come back and bring the tractor home. So I think that's what we're going to do. Let's get this loaded up. And later come back for the tractor. And then my buddy is gonna come back 
here and pick the semi up from us when I come back and get the four. So we're just gonna get the planter loaded up. back a little bit and then re set it on there. Oh, I screwed that up. That's about as good as we're going to get that. We're going to take it as far back and then we're going to undo the hydraulics. I guess I did not want to stay up there. We'll make it work. And we're just going to pull the tractor over here. We're going to shut it off there. And then we're going to hop into the semi and hook the trailer up and then we will take this back to the farmyard. It would be nice if we could take them both at the same time, but that's physically impossible. Close enough. There we go. Well, we're gonna see, make sure it's all locked down. All right, I think we should be able to go. We've got the flags. We're gonna go make sure hazards work. Hazards are working. Semi hazards are working. All right, I think we are good to go to get this back to the farmyard. So I'm gonna take the fun long drive home to bring this back, and I will meet you guys back there momentarily. All right, we're just turning right down into the farmyard. We were able to successfully bring the planter back home. And we're going to take it back all the way towards where the machinery row is at. And we're going to grab the Kubota tractor and I think we're going to pull it right off the trailer. And then we're going to go back and get the case. And then we're going to go and stop right about here. And we're going to unhook it drive forward, maybe. Well, we have some sort of issue. And it got caught in the fence. Hmm. Well, let's go grab the Kubota real fast and see if we can pry it out of there. It wouldn't be another day without some sort of issues going on, right? I think we're just going to leave the bat wing right where it's at. Gonna hop in. I'm going to fire this up. And let's go see if we can pry that out. Shred the semi away. The most unrealistic thing to do, but hard when it's giant physics. Like, I have nothing against the game, it's just the physics is something else. Well, apparently. 
apparently that isn't going to work. Alright, well, I will be back once I figure out how to get that unstuck from the semi. Alright, we finally got that situation taken care of. Now we should be able to take it off and move it into the row of machinery. I think the Kapoda will have enough horsepower to be able to pull it off. Close enough. We gotta make sure we hook the hydraulics. If we don't, it won't be able to pull it. Got it right off the trailer here without an issue. And we're just going to come over and put it right by our honeybee header. Which that I did upgrade off camera to uh, custom modding's honeybee header. Really cool mod more than happy to play with it along with the case corn planter this is a custom modding planter as well the land all we're using to bring all this stuff home is custom modding as well so you can find them on facebook um, the honeybee header has not been released for consoles yet that was released for consoles um, but you can find the corn planters and land all on the Giants in-game HUD, mod HUD, you can find that there. Really good mods, really well detailed mods, really like playing them. And they did release, I believe, an Ago pack, an Ago tractor pack, and then a John Deere pack by them just got released as well. So, really good really good modding community they have they're really good for what what they do mod quality is really good i like them and so yeah all right so we gotta get one more tractor pull and then we can do the fun adventure of going and start hunting some trolling back there to uh, pick up the traction king and then we'll be back here and unloading it. So see you in a few minutes. Alright, so we're coming back up to the guy's place for the last, well not the last time, but for the last thing we need to pull down. We might actually just load the pickup on here and pull the pickup on the trailer back and my buddy can just meet us at my place and he can take his semi back. I mean, he doesn't live that far from my farm anyways, so we're just going to probably give him a call and tell him that's what we're going to do. So we're going to pull in like this. We're going to unhook the trailer. And we're going to pull forward and leave the semi here. We're going to get the traction king fired up. I think we're just going to drive it straight on. We're not going to back it on. And then we'll get the Ford loaded up and we'll get the stuff home. should be enough room to get the port on there too. We're going to close the guys' door. We're not going to be an house when we leave that open. We're going to fire up the pickup. And we're going to go drive it right onto the trailer. And then that saves trips. We 
are just going to ignore that. I just push the tractor up the front of the pickup. And we're gonna pretend that didn't cost you know, a couple dollars of damages to it. And we got it all loaded. We're gonna go shut the pickup off. We're gonna turn the blinkers on again for hazards. And we're gonna take this stuff home. Everything ready to go for getting canola planted. So I will see you guys when we get the tractor and pickup unloaded and the semi gets returned, and we'll come back. I'll come back and get the cedar hooked up to the traction king, and we're gonna make our way to the field and do some planting. See you soon. All right. Well, plans changed a little bit. So we left the Ford in the field that we're gonna go plant. Um, Co-op came and filled up two of the grain trucks with seed and fertilizer. So we got one truck full of seed and one truck full of fertilizer. And then those are out in the field ready to go. And then they came over and filled up the Concord air drill we got here. And this is what we're gonna use to go plant canola. So we're gonna hook this up to the Traction King and then we're going to take it up to that field and we're going to dive into some canola planting. Dogs are hooked up. We're going to fold up the planter and then we're going to take off to the field and we're going to go put some canola in the ground and eventually we, I did downgrade our case planter that you saw in the first two episodes the first episode I downgraded to the Concord because of what how the playthrough is going through right now is that that case planter was a big upgrade right away out of the gate and then these Concord planters were released that I saw, and so I downloaded the Concord planter, just got rid of the case, and bought the Concord planter instead. And so we're gonna use the Concord planter, and we're losing power climbing up the steep hill here. But anyways, this is our planter. We will eventually upgrade it to the case. Um, the Kenzie corn planter we got, that's gonna be sold in the winter since we purchased that case corn planter now. So we got a few things we gotta do in the winter. But in the time being, we're gonna go focus on getting canola in the ground. So I'm gonna take my happy time, my slow time and happy time to get to the field and I will see you guys there when I reach that destination. All right, so we're up here now. We're gonna get this unfolded and we're gonna get the mola running through the ground now. The Massey's up here on the plow. Ford's up here because that's got fuel in it. And we're gonna fire up the cedar. And we're gonna shut the blinker off. Drop the planter down and we're gonna go at a good five miles an hour. So it's gonna be a we're gonna be out here for a while. So and we're gonna get this canola in the ground so that it's done and don't have to worry about if we're going to be able to get it in or not right away. And then once once we get this planted, next we'll be doing the plow work. You know, the fields that withered because we didn't get to the oats right away. We're going to get those fields plowed up and ready to be planted with wheat and barley when that time comes. And then probably go into the fall harvest and get the sunflower, soybeans, and corn off. So. 
we got a lot to do still and then a lot more yet to still do afterwards we don't want to plant the other field oh, so we're going to jump away from that real quick and and we're just going to Just sit here and let the tractor and planter do its thing and just keep eyes on fill levels and get as much of this as we can done. Didn't look like there was any rain in the forecast, so we should be having clear skies, so we should be able to go a lot longer on this field than we did when we harvested the sorghum off of it because the rain did end up coming and putting a hold on to it for an hour in game and then we had to wait another hour for it to dry out before I could even go and combine it again. So we got all off luckily, so that's all sitting in the bin to be used for our next year's seeding crop and then whatever we don't use for the seed, we're gonna sell right off and, and empty the bin out and put some money in the bank account. So. I'm going to put this into a time lapse here and do a time lapse for a few and then probably in the video there because we're not going to get this field done in one video. So I will see you when I am ready to end the video.
think this is where we're gonna cut the episode. We got a new to us 2870 case traction king with no hours on it. With a Concord air seater being pulled behind it. Did a few rounds of granola in here already. Figured out why it was going so slow is just because the transmission. That is a mod issue. The mod has that issue. I don't know how to fix it. It's just one of those you kind of have to go back, undo the hydraulics, hook the hydraulics back up, reverse it to get it into negative two, and then go forward. Then it'll start driving and shifting properly. That's That's been the issue with the mod since it came out. I don't know if it's a mod conflict. I don't know if it was like that from the factory. I shouldn't say it was like that when the mod came out. I've it's only happened with me i haven't seen anyone else that ran this actually have that issue but i also didn't see too many people actually running said case so that's that's what we're gonna do is i'm either gonna continue doing this on my own and pick up the video going and doing some plowing work or i'm gonna time lapse this whole planting of this field time lapse the whole thing and then the next episode we'll kick off coming back out here to the 4900 massey ferguson and continue with the chisel plowing work we've been doing i got this field another oat field that rotted and then a sugar beet field that i want to plow up because i'm not going to screw around with sugar beets or potatoes so that's just going to be plowed up right out the gate um but the goal right now is to get the canola in and probably finish the plowing in the fields that we're not going to harvest and probably lime the fields that we didn't lime right away. Get those plowed and then probably move forward into November and start the soybean, corn, and sunflower harvest then. So that is all. I am HT Farms. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next. See you later.